All right. Science Corner, rapid fire. You wanted to get to Coco. Here we are. We're at Coco. Freeberg, you have the well, you floor. Guys, you guys asked about Coco. You want to pull up the commodity price chart on Coco? Look at that. Okay. This is not cocaine. This is Coco. This is chocolate. Precursor to chocolate, not cocaine. This is chocolate. As you guys can see from this chart, Coco has moved in price from about 2000 bucks a ton, which is where it normally trades at, to $10,000 a ton. 70% of cocoa is grown in West Africa, uh, in Ghana and Ivory Coast. And in that area, they've been severely hit by this El Nino weather year that we're just kind of coming out of. So here's all the cocoa production. 73% of it's in Africa, mostly in Ghana and Ivory Coast. That's where most of the world's cocoa beans are produced. Cocoa is grown from the cacao tree which is about 10 feet tall, these bean pods, you take them down, you roast the beans, crush it, you make cocoa. When you eat a Hershey's bar, for example, 11% of that bar is ground up cocoa powder. So cocoa is like the critical ingredient in all the chocolate products we consume. So we had this massive El Nino event last year. So here you can see sea surface temperatures. So in Q4 of last year, El Nino spiked like crazy. And that caused a lot of rainfall to hit the west coast of Africa. And as a result, this fungus was spread in cocoa trees. There's a fungus called black pod disease. And this fungus spreads when rainfall hits the ground and it splashes up, gets in the tree. And then the tree has really bad yield and the cocoa production goes down. So now if you look at the cocoa production out of Ghana, you can see that we've seen a like 50% rough decline in cocoa production on the final bar chart. So that's the effect. So when that happened, Basically, everyone started to corner the market. So all the buyers of cocoa went in and started buying cocoa like crazy. And then all the short sellers got squeezed because there's typically a pretty good balance on the short and long side in the market. So then the short sellers got squeezed and it caused this big parabolic jump in price. And that's where we're at today. The chocolate companies, again, 11% of chocolate that you're buying at the store is made from this cocoa powder. Uh, they're talking about cutting the size of their chocolate bars, raising prices, and starting to use other ingredients. So you'll start to see that happen in the shelves in the next couple of months. But this is the big news in the commodity markets right now is this, this parabolic spike in cocoa prices. And, you know, consumers will get hit with high prices and smaller chocolate bars. Isn't there a scene in trading places? Yeah, the, the OJ features. Orange yeah, orange yeah. features. Yeah, that's right. They squeeze the orange market. That's right. That's basically what's happening in cocoa. So there was a bad weather event. Yields dropped by 50%. So we got half the production. And then all the traders came in and they squeezed the short side of the market and price spike. So that's kind of what's going on. If I had like a, a dollar for the, the number of times a fungus has ruined a good time, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. I was looking at this and I was worried about oh, chocolate comes. prices. Oh, here I, it comes. <laughs> I, was, I was really worried about chocolate prices. Specifically, um, <laughs> I'm on Amazon right now and these edible anus, anus prices have gone up somehow. <laughs> so... <laughs> These chocolate Uranus prices are skyrocketing. Wow. How, How did you find this? <laughs> I just typed in Uranus. I typed in Freeberg's Uranus and chocolate, and this came up. It was the number one result. So we, we know what. Like an we, there it is. Uranus. Wow. Is, uh, <laughs> chocolate prices are going up. I know so, what I'm getting you guys for Christmas this year. Well, it's pri- <laughs> you notice it was priced in euros, not dollars. Yeah, it's not it available was, in America. It's it was just, coming yeah. from. Belgium. I guess they got some serious kink going on over there. Yes. If you want a <laughs> chocolate Uranus, it's it's there for you. <laughs> I mean, I just was like, Google search chocolate Uranus. <laughs> and yeah, I don't recommend you make that search if you're listening to the pod. Well, don't, when, don't, I, when I heard there was a spike in Coke prices, it made me think of this. <laughs> <laughs> say hello to my little friend <laughs> when's the last time when's the last time you watched scarface beginning to end not like just caught a During couple COVID, i watched it yeah it holds up yeah yeah i mean man it is by the way i saw dune too jamath have you seen it no no don't say anything because I, I need to <laughs> wait till it comes to streaming me okay i loved it I'm Sax going back to see it. it. Overrated. I'm going back to see it again. I'm going to see it at IMAX this so time. So you're with me? I didn't hate oh. it. I just oh think it's overrated. God. Like Spielberg said, it was like one of the greatest moments of it his life. It is one of the something. greatest movies I've ever seen. I thought. No, it's completely overrated. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just not that Scale good. of one to 10. Give it a number. 
I will do anything to have this guy do Dune 3. He's talking about whether or not he should do it. He's like, I'm only going to do it if it's going to be better than Dune 2. You know, he's uh, Canadian. Negotiation Dennis tactic. Villeneuve? Canadian guy, yeah. He did Sicario. Sicario and The Arrival. It, like, yeah. he's honestly one of the top three directors he, of our who's era. Who's that? Villeneuve? He's incredible. Villeneuve? Dennis, no, Denis Villeneuve. 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 I don't know. The, the hero in that movie is like this soy go. boy type. I mean, I don't really believe that he's leading an army. <laughs> I just, I, it's, that's not credible. You know the story? I, I read a lot about, you know, these were all like short stories published in magazines by Frank Herbert. And serialized. He was, they were serialized. serialized. And he was yeah. really into drugs. He was really into mushrooms. Oh. And so the spice came around from the mushrooms. Makes sense. It was written in 1965. When mm. There was this idea that we needed to move towards zero population growth because the population spike on Earth was going to cause resource uh, constraints and we were all going to die, if you guys remember this. And so mm. there was this big movement. Uh, it's what launched the hippie movement. Did they not have math back in 1965? Yeah, they, they really did think this and that there wasn't going to be improvements in productivity. So there were limited resources. The world math. was going to run out of land. And the ecology or the environmentalist movement kind of sprung out of this effort. So a lot of what he wrote about was the ecology and the connection mm. between the fungus and taking mushrooms and better understanding the world around you. So, so much of this was rooted in a hippie movement, Sax, to your point, when he wrote these original um, Do they ever short explain stories. what the spice is in Dune? No. And it was tied they to mushrooms. They never explain why when he people was interviewed, want spice. When Frank Herbert was interviewed later, he talked about how it was meant to be about uh, fungus is this, the greater of life and this greater of life. Mm. And he wanted spice to be representative of mushrooms, of fungus. Got it. Psilocybin. Got it. And it was like, it opens your mind and you get more connected with nature and all this stuff. So it was rooted in that, but they never really get into details on it in, in the book. 